What's up, YouTube? It's the Action Figure Grader coming back to you with a vintage Kenner market update, and we have got a boatload to go through. There were some incredible items and some eye-popping sales prices for a number of items, so I'm going to go ahead and dig right in. If you like what you see and you are new to the channel, please consider subscribing. But look at this beautiful radio-controlled Jawa sand crawler. This came out in 1979. This is a mint and sealed box example. You never, ever see these come up for auction. And uh, this one sold for $5,200 on 40 bids. Uh, just a you know, truly incredible item. This just closed yesterday, so I was waiting for this one to close before I put this video together. And I can tell you that I've seen some, some sealed AFA graded examples that were like 80 grade, and this is about where this one would 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 sell at. Uh, let me zoom in on these photos so you can take a look at this ultra rare item. As you can see on the box art, uh, it has like a little radio control uh, controller that comes with it. And I have seen, I, I, I do remember seeing uh, maybe six months or nine months ago an AFA 80 example, and that sold for around $7,500 to $8,000. And, uh, you know, like I said, this one's not graded yet, but probably an 80 grade, uh, maybe a 75 plus, just given some, some of the minor corner dings that you can see. Uh, there's a crease right there and a small crunch right there, but wow, what an amazing item. This is, uh, this is honestly the first time I've ever seen this come up for sale in an auction ever. And uh, while I certainly haven't been, you know, watching the market for years and years or anything, um, just, just on memory, this is, uh, probably one of the few times you'll ever see this come up for sale. So, uh, a really amazing item and, uh, the, the price reflected that, but it sold for $5,200 for me, that would have been 5720 after taxes. So, uh, pretty wild to see that. Um, let's see what else we got here. Uh, there were a couple of, from that same seller that I had in a previous video, he listed another couple of uh, AFA graded 12 inch examples, and this one was the 3PO. This one actually sold for for right in line of with where the the market has been for these 12 inch figures. This was an AFA 80 grade C3PO. It sold for $760 plus shipping. Uh, that puts you at about almost $900 after taxes and shipping, but uh, a, a pretty a pretty amazing item. Um, but this is really the only one of all the ones that he's listed that came in at a reasonable price. I mean, everything else, as you saw in the previous videos, came in really high. There was a Boba Fett that sold for big money. Um, Alea also sold for big money. And I'll show you that right here. This is uh, $3,100 was the sales price on this one. This was an AFA 85, so very, very high grade. And, uh, you know, an AFA 80, is, it's going to be closer to about $2,000 is where I've seen them sell. But uh, this one was AFA 85, just an absolutely gorgeous item. Here's the label on it, and uh, you can see there, 85 grade. 80, 85, 90 were the subgrades for that one. So, uh, so uh, tr truly, tr truly very rare that you ever see these come up at auction. That one had 36 bids. So uh, next was another number, a number that, that really surprised me with how high it finished. This was an AFA 85 Hoth Wampa. And again, it goes back to what I've been harping on in past videos, that if you hit that 85 grade for boxed items, um, you're going to get the, the big dollars. This one sold for $1411 plus shipping and taxes. Uh, AFA 80s usually sell around seven to $800. Uh, so this sold for about double that, uh, just, just to go from an AFA 80 to an 85. That just shows you the premium that high-end collectors are willing to pay for for something like that. All right, now I gotta show these uh, blacked out Ewoks. A fellow YouTuber and I uh, were discussing these Jawas that he had. There were several Jawas that he had, and this one was just uh, a new high water mark, in my opinion, for a ninety grade. This was UKG ninety grade. Typically, an AFA ninety will sell at a premium to UKG nineties or CAS nineties, uh, just because AFA is a little bit more strict, uh, or some some cases a lot more strict. So I don't know what an AFA 90 Vinyl Cape Java would sell for, given that this UKG 90 sold for $4,301, $4,300 for uh, a UKG 90 Vinyl Cape Java. Uh, a, a really beautiful item, though. Here's a close-up of it so you can take a look at it. Uh, probably another example of, of, of an item that you'll, you'll never see come up at auction or very rarely 
Um, I would guess that a, probably an AFA 90 would sell $5,000 and above now for, for a, a vinyl Cape Jawa. But uh, th this is a, a really beautiful example. He also did have a couple of Spanish POC, early Spanish figures for, for the Jawas. This is a what's labeled as a poor sonic weld POC Jawa with the dark brown bandoliers. And uh, it, it was really beautifully encased with the new casing technology that UKG has added to some of their their items. Uh, it's got the recessed case for the uh, for the blaster. The uh, the Jawas cape was was kind of uh, pegged next to it, and then they used kind of the similar similar style to what you see over at uh, Collector Archive Services. Now keep in mind, this is not a non sonic welded. This is a weak welded, meaning that uh, that the welds had come apart, which is common with these early Spanish figures. The welds were just very poorly done, and they would fall apart. Now, historically, collector archive services won't even grade those. I've sent some in the past, like weak welded uh, uh, overstock leddies that had been welded, unpainted, and then they fell apart again. Well, in the past, they haven't graded those. I have seen some collector archive services weak weld Spanish figures that they've graded. Uh, Tony Wallace, who runs Yorkie Bespin, he had one that just came back from collector archive. And Collector Archive, or excuse me, UKG did grade this. You can see it's this is the light bandolier. There is a dark bandolier version, which I'll show you in a second. Or I, I'm sorry, I just showed it to you. So, uh, what? No, I didn't. Here it is. Here it is, right here. Um, sorry, uh, this is the dark brown bandolier. So you can see how dark that is versus um, the one I just showed you. And we'll, we'll circle back to that in a second. But here is uh, the dark brown bandolier, and this is the light brown bandolier version. So, um, excuse my uh, incorrect information there earlier but uh, a really nice item and you know again I me personally I would not pay this for a weak weld a weak weld just means it's falling apart but it is displayed nicely and it is a pretty rare figure so let's let's get that out of the way that sold for 650 plus shipping so that's a big number for uh, a figure that's falling apart but um, this one is still together this is the dark brown bandolier puck and uh, that one sold for 845 that's a big number I've got this one graded by UKG uh, in an 85 grade, and I did not pay anywhere near that price. Um, I think I paid 600 for mine. So, uh, but this has got a better case style and, you know, the updated case style. And it is quite a bit, you know, this is over a year ago that I bought mine. So uh, the power of inflation with, with some of these vintage rare uh, foreign beauties. The last one I thought was the best deal of the bunch. This one was a mixed stitch cape uh, Jawa that uh, had, uh, green stitch around uh, the the bottom hem of the robe and then brown stitches around the sleeve. So you don't see these very often come up. And it sold for 182 plus shipping. That was a really great deal. Whoever picked that one up got a great deal on that because those are not common at all to have uh, mixed colors with the stitching on the robe. And uh, so whoever got that, congratulations. That's probably the best deal we're gonna see in this whole batch here. Um, another one that the same seller, oh, I'm sorry, this is a different seller. He had, uh, well, was he? The, yeah, this is the same seller. I apologize. The, the same seller as as some of those Jawas that sold. Um, this was a Mexican Lily Letty R2-D2. You hardly ever see them in such a high grade. This one was a UKG 80 grade. Uh, Lily Letty Solid Dome 80 grade. And I, I mean, I, I, I very rarely see them graded over about a 70 or 75. They're just... In general, the stickers on those Letty R2-D2s do not age well, and they typically yellow really, uh, really heavily just due to deterioration over time. But this one was 80 grade, really beautiful. That one sold for a big number. It sold for $940 plus shipping. Absolutely gorgeous example. I wouldn't, just, you know, I always like to double check, especially with Letty's when UKG grades something. I just want to double check it. And this one was, in fact, a, a, a Lily Letty. There's three different Lily Letty sticker types, according to Variant Villain and Imperial Gunnery, but this one was ab uh, absolutely a uh, a Letty, and you can tell by the little blue. Let's see if I can get a better close up here. This little blue uh, part of the sticker, it's got a smaller rounded uh, segment there, and then on these uh, two big dots right here, uh, two big dots with the with the uh, horizontal lines going across, those have four instead of three. Uh, or excuse me, instead of five on the Hong Kongs. So that's how you spot a Letty. And uh, there's plenty of great resources online for those that want to kind of look at that. But that one absolutely was a, a Lily Letty 
very high grade and it sold for the big number, $940 US. Um, another one that was a pretty good deal, I thought, was this one. This was a 12 back Sand People and you know the footer, like my uh, 32 back Yoda, um, the footer had come up in front of the figure. So I think that's partially why it was discounted as much as it, as it was. Uh, the figure looked to be in pretty good shape overall. Uh, probably a 75 plus or an 80 grade, you know, I, I lean towards an 80 grade for uh, the overall item, but that was a pretty great deal. $374 plus shipping, probably 440 or so for me after taxes. That's a good deal on a 12 back, even what some of the graded ones have done. And, uh, I, you know, like I said, I think it's because that footer had come, come up in front of the figure that, uh, you know, folks were just not willing to pay, you know, big money for it. Um, Bear with me while my computer uh, updates here, but this was another beautiful one. This was a 20 back G AFA 80 death squad commander. This had been relisted and relisted and, and had never actually sold. And uh, it finally did. It had the Boba Fett offer on it and uh, it sold for 850 with free shipping. So I, I think it, the, the seller was just patient and was waiting out the market uh, and, and the market slowly increasing like we've seen over the last six months or so. And someone finally, Pulled the trigger on it, but it was a beautiful example of a Death Squad Commander on a 20 back card. 850 plus taxes for that one. Uh, another one that I thought was a pretty good deal. This one sold for for about $400 plus shipping, or excuse me, plus taxes. This one was an IG-88. This was a 32 back A. Really nice condition, probably an AFA 80 grade overall. I've got a 75 plus and I paid less than that for mine already graded. But this one was in much better condition, in my opinion. Really, really nice example uh, thirty of the 32 back A. So it's not his first appearance uh, or his, his debut card back, but uh, it's his second one. Uh, so it's, it's, a, it's a very nice IG-88, and that sold for a very reasonable number in the current environment. Uh, next was a 41 back uh, ESB Han Solo in his Bespin outfit. Uh, beautiful example. I couldn't tell if the blister had had yellowed yet. Uh, it looked like it might have just a little bit of yellowing, but but it's it's hard to tell sometimes. But you know, looking at this angle, it looks like it was still a clear blister. Um, but that sold for four hundred. I thought that was a very reasonable price. Um, really nice example overall. Um, so a, a, a few fair deals. I mean, they're not steals, but they're, they're pretty fair deals. I think for some of these, this one had a, a an older UKG label, but this one was a Palatoy forty five back. Chewbacca, uh, believed to be a Toy Tony, um, and that one sold for six ninety two plus shipping. So a big number, uh, further proof that wh whether it's a Toy Tony or not, that uh, people are willing to pay now for a, a nice high grade example of these ESB forty uh, ESB uh, Empire Strikes Back Toy Tonys. So a, a really big number there. Um, another one that was not a Toy Tony, this one was the Return of the Jedi Palatoy 65 back. I, ch I double checked the uh, Toy Tony guide to make sure that wasn't on the list, but it was not. It does have some slight yellowing starting to show on the on the uh, blister. Um, and that one was graded UKG 80 on a newer label. Uh, that one sold for 352 plus shipping. I thought that was a pretty fair deal, even though it had some slight yellowing since it graded. Uh, another one that I was, <laughs> I was looking pretty hard at this one, but I just, you know, I can't. I couldn't swing it timing wise, but this one was a '77 back Death Star droid U.S. card back, and it had a clear blister, and, and they're hard to find. It was uh, $400 was the was the list price. It did have right here uh, a fairly big tear on the card back that did poke through to the other side, which I'll try to show you right here. Um, you can see it. Where is it? It wasn't massive, but it it, it it was a little tear that came through. But I still think it would probably get an 80, a low 80 grade. Um, pretty fair price, really. I mean, $400 plus shipping for that. I think I have a 65 back clear blister Death Star droid. I think mine after grading and everything was, was, was about that same price. So uh, a pretty good number. It's just hard to find the Death Star droid on a Return of the Jedi later card back, 65 and 77 backs. Where the where the blister is still clear, and so it, it sat for a little while, maybe a week or so, before it finally did sell. And I, I wanted it bad, but I just you know I can't swing it right now. Um, this one was an interesting one. Another another item that you don't see come up that much, especially at auction, is a graded Overstock KB Toys two pack. This one had the Hoth Stormtrooper and 
Han in his indoor trench coat. Uh, this the the Hoth uh, stormtrooper had kind of flipped around, and just like most of these KB Overstock two packs, the the blisters just beat up, and it had an AFA forty score. Uh, here's the label on it. It was a card of seventy, blister forty, figure eighty, and um, you know even ungraded these can go for big money. And this one sold for three ninety plus shipping, and believe it or not, that's a really fair price for these uh, Overstock two packs. So. Pretty good deal there for whoever picked that up. There's a gentleman named uh, Luke Wilkinson in the Facebook groups. He's got a massive collection of these. It's it's pretty incredible. If you go to some of the vintage Star Wars groups on Facebook, you'll see some photos of his incredible collection. He probably has a hundred of these things, uh, and they're just uh, really beautiful to look at. Uh, we're going to finish it off with a few later card backs. This was an Ewoks Canadian. Uh, this was the Duloc Scout, and in pretty good shape overall. Uh, unpunched in really nice shape. You can see the Canadian language, French French language there for the Canadian card back. Clear blister too, which you don't find very often. That one sold for about 300 bucks. I thought that was a pretty fair price for that one. And then the other Ewoks item was pretty beat up, but I wanted to show it anyway since I was showing one. This one had quite a bit of damage. This was the Ewoks TV, uh, you know, a cartoon version of low gray. In high grade for this low gray, it can go for big money. This one also had a clear blister, which was nice. But the card back had quite a bit of damage, as you can see, a lot of creasing at the top of the card there. But even still, that one still sold for 266 plus shipping and taxes, so a really big number. Finally, we got a, a couple of uh, droids card backs. This was a Canadian pop-up droids R2-D2, really nice condition overall, probably an 80 or 80 plus grade. Uh, yellow blister, but that didn't stop the bidders. It sold for it sold for $1,125 plus shipping and taxes, so let's call it about. 1250 or so after taxes for me, um, but a really nice example. And uh, these, these things always seem to be eclipsing the $1,000 to $1,100, $1,200 mark pretty easily for that droids R2-D2. And this one was on the foreign card back, which was nice. And then finally, we got a Canadian Thal Jobin. This one has been going up very steadily, probably because it's got the black Imperial Stormtrooper blaster that everyone loves. But this one was mint on card. And um, a really nice example, yellow blister, of course, but uh, the card back was in pretty excellent condition overall. I had a couple of minor blemishes, but really nice. There's that black blaster that people like to see, and that one sold for $300 plus shipping. So pretty fair number given where Thal, Jobin, even loose and ungraded are, are selling for. I mean, I'm seeing 175 200 250 even for a really nice mint example, loose, ungraded for, for Thal, Jobin with his correct blaster. So... Anyway, that's all I really had for this market update. I hope that you enjoyed it. Please consider subscribing if you're new. If you like, uh, if you are uh, an existing subscriber, thank you so much for watching. Please be sure to like and comment below, and I'll be back soon.